Good morning, everybody. What a beautiful opportunity we have today to be in the house of God and worshiping His holy name and being happy all together. Loving our good Lord, please stand up. Let's pray. Let's give thanks to our Lord. And let's prepare to worship Him. Father, we give you thanks. We love you. We adore you. Receive the songs that we have for you today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your love and your mercy. We adore you, Lord. Amen. God is on the move. <laughs> Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light, anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight, anytime somebody lives and serve and not be served, I know, I know, I know, I know. God is on the move, on the move.
lost the divine, lost in our sin, you made us alive. How can we ever hold it inside? We can't hold back. We're going to lift you higher, higher. Hearts burning bright like a fire, fire. Voices unite, make it louder, louder. Never going to stop singing. Ooh, we're never going to stop higher, higher. Hearts burning bright like a fire, fire. Voices unite, make it louder, louder. Never going to stop singing. Ooh, we're never going to stop. Every child, every tongue, every heart will sing. Every knee we will bow to the risen King. Lift him up, lift him up, never stop singing. Ooh, and never gonna stop. Every tribe, every tongue, every heart will sing. Every knee we will bow to the risen King. Lift him up, lift him up, never stop singing. This song excites me.
took a breath, you breathe your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. our Lord through our offering. Whether it is through an envelope here in church or online. Let's give to God what belongs to Him. Thank you, Lord, for all your provision. We love you, Lord. watching and listening what is what do you need today do you need healing do you need uh, peace in your heart do you need joy do you need a financial miracle you need reconciliation with someone that you ha got into an argument recently what is what you need I invite you, close your eyes, bow your head, 
lift up your hands and talk to him. Dear Father, hear your people talking to you right now, Lord. Listen to your to their prayers, Lord. Please, Lord, listen to the prayers of your people. I ask you, in the name of Jesus, listen to the prayers of your people right now. Lord. Please, Father. May your peace, Lord, will come down upon my brothers and my sisters. Help them to let it go, Lord. Father, help them to let it go. Whatever it is the thing that they are mad at, help them to let it go. Whatever this problem is, help them, Father, to see you and not the problem. Whatever the challenge is, Lord, give them the faith to my brothers and my sisters that they will overcome in the name of Jesus. We are overcomers in your presence, Lord. We are not weak anymore, Lord. We are not abandoned anymore. We are not alone. In you, Lord, we are complete. You help us, Lord. There is new power. There is no freedom, and the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire. Today, 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 new wine. Because there is new wine, there is new power. There is no freedom, and the kingdom is here. In you, Lord, we are being restored. May your strength come down right now among us, Lord. Strength in Jesus' name. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be i came here with nothing but all you have given me jesus bring new wine out of me jesus bring new wine out of me lord you can do it father and thank you for this love. There is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. In Jesus' name, we receive from you today, Lord, this wonderful blessing to be in your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. New power in you, Lord. There is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. I lay down my all times. Yes, Lord. New, new fire today. Oh, thank you, Father. The time has come for us to receive God's word. We have praised Him, adored Him, and worshipped Him. Now we will hear a powerful message that our Lord has poured down into our pastor's heart. Let's get ready to receive the inspiration that we need this week to go into battle with faith in our Lord Jesus. Let's give a hand to our Lord God and all together say, One, two, three, victory! Yay, Lord!
topic of today is how to keep the energy. Today, May 17, 2020, our worship service number 190 from Odessa, Texas to the world. Here is Victory Church. Praise Jesus, how to keep the energy. And I would love to invite anyone that is watching online to go to our website, thechurch.us, and download the bulletin of today. The rest of us here in the church, we have the bulletin. We are ready to write our notes. How to keep the energy. You know that in these days, some people act like uh, the cell phone. Yeah. Have you noticed that? A lot of people, they are acting like the cell phone. You know, sometimes in the morning, you grab your phone, your mobile. Some people call them cell phones. You, you grab your phone and you see... 100% charge. And then you feel good, right? You say, I'm good to go. And then you start doing your things, whatever you do. And suddenly you check the battery level and it says 80%. And then you start to feel a little bit uncomfortable. It is only 10 a.m. Okay. Lunchtime comes and then you are about to eat something, right? And then suddenly you check the battery and it's 45%. And you know what is interesting? This is funny, guys. Some people act like their phones, you know. When the phone is 40% charged, people are start to walk like this. Oh, my gosh. Where is the charger? I need a charger. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. We need to learn how to keep the energy. Unfortunately, guys, the problem is that it's not through one day. Sometimes the level of energy of some people go down one day and keeps down the next day and keeps down the next day. And you see some of these people after you talk with them two weeks later, and how are you doing? Yeah, hanging in there. <laughs> My gosh, and you're just thinking, how in the world this guy or this girl can make it with this battery all the way down? I want to talk to you about it today. But in order to understand this, I want to share with you this beautiful scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Are you ready to read it with me? Let's read it together, all together. Ready? There is a right time for everything, and everything on earth will happen at the right time. That is key to understand how to keep the energy, understanding that Everything has its own time, you know? Everything has its own time. Today, I'm going to share this message with you. It has four sections. The first section, I'm going to explain to you why it is important to keep the energy. And then I will talk to you about what are the things that take your energy away. Then I will talk to you about what are the things that energizes us. And finally, I'm going to talk to you about supernatural energy. And you will love to hear that part. Supernatural energy. Are you ready for this? Let's go. Section A. Why? Why do we need to keep the energy? Well, on the screen you can see a graph that it has to do with the seasons. Okay, question. Come on, young fellas. What season are we right now? Are we in the summer? We are in a transition. Correct? We are finalizing spring and starting to feel the summer, right? Okay, so people say summer. Well, we know something. It's going to take three months, and after that, we will experience the new season. And after that, many people love the fall. I know you do. I love the fall. Many people, I heard some people saying, my favorite is the fall. Now, after that is when things get better for those who can't stand the heat, the winter. And some of us like the snow. I love the snow. I live in the mountains for a while. I live in the East Coast, and I love snow. But eventually the season ends, and then we go back to one of my favorite seasons in life, which is the spring. It's beautiful because of the flowers and, and all that, correct? And here we go. After the springs, we come back to summer. So as we know, seasons are a cycle. It's like a loop. 
So we come from one to another, to one to another. And you know what? We need to keep our level of energy because every season will present a different challenge. You need to be prepared for each season. Now, this is a cycle. However, in life, my friends, life is not a cycle for us. I have news for you. Life goes like in a line. We start as a little cute baby, right? Cute baby. And then suddenly from being a baby, we are now a little girl, a little boy, adorable age. And then we become teenagers and woohoo! Interesting for many, terrible for others. Exciting for many. Ooh. Scary for many parents. <laughs> Eventually, we become young adults. And finally, we are adults. But eventually, it's going to happen. We are going to become senior citizens. It's going to happen sooner or, sooner or later. Okay. Now, I want you to re remember the scripture that I just gave you in Ecclesiastes 3.1. There is a right time for everything, and everything on earth will happen at the right time. There is a time for you to be a baby. And there is a time for you to be a toddler. And in each one of those seasons, not like the seasons of summer, spring, winter, and fall, in life, you are not going to come back. I have news for you. It's not a cycle, my friends. Just keep on going until it ends. So what are the things that we need to be aware of in each season? Okay, here we go. When we are babies, what is the most important thing is to be nurtured. You know, a baby cannot do much. You know, they eat, they go to the bathroom, and they cry. And then they sleep. That's pretty much what the baby can do. We know that. But then when you are a little girl, little boy, is the season for you to learn. In fact, in life, we all are learning all the time. We all are learning all the time, no matter where you are in life, but mainly when you are a little kid. Listen, there is a joke somebody said to me one day. He says, do you know, Gian, that in, in Japan, the kids are very smart? And I said, oh, really? Why you say that? They speak Japanese since they are little. <laughs> oh, wow. I said, that's amazing. Yeah, naturally, language is something that we learn by listening and repeating. Correct? Words we hear. A baby, a little kid is like a white page. Attention, parents, please. If you have little ones, Pay attention to what are you writing in those white pages. It's funny when you see little girls playing with their dolls. How do they talk to the dolls? Have you seen those? It's, it's so interesting. Here's the little girl playing with the dolls and says, if you don't do your homework, you are not going to watch TV. And blah, blah, blah. And they talk to the baby doll, you know, to the dolls, exactly like their mothers are talking to them. Now, you wonder why some kids have that filthy language. Why you wonder why some kids do not like eat vegetables? When, you know, the time for you to create a character, personality, to form a kid is when they are little. You know, the older the kid gets, less possibilities you have to influence your child. So take advantage of the time where they can learn. Now, that doesn't mean that because you now are 47, you cannot learn. Don't take it that way. You always can learn. Now, when you are a teenager, what is what you do? You want to explore. Do you remember that? I do remember that. I wanted to explore things. And you, 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 go, you boys, you like to explore things, right? And we do crazy stuff. You know what, one of the things, one of the things that as a teenager, it is so funny, guys, is that we don't, we, 
<laughs> we don't measure danger. Do you remember those days? I don't know if you guys did this. I am on my bicycle with my friends, and we are just riding in the bikes right in the neighborhood, you know, so cool, you know. In those years, you know, in the, in the 70s, a Californian bicycle was the bicycle, you know, with the whatever. And so somebody said, what if we jump here in this street? And, and you know what happens, right? Well, all of us tried many things when we are teenagers because we want to explore. And sometimes we explore what is wrong. That is what we do as a teenager. We explore, we are curious. You know, what is the feeling? What happens if I do this? Do you think that this hurts? How much can you take? Let's try it. Boom. You know, things like that. It's, it's the season we want to explore. You know, the first kiss. Imagine the teenagers. I, I, want, I, want, to, I want to kiss a girl. I want to kiss a girl. And, and then you are like, mm -mm. and you have no idea how to kiss a girl. You know, everything is like that. You're in that season that you want to explore things. But later, you learn things. And now you are in the season to acquire experience as a young adult. Right? You are acquiring experience. You get married. You have your children. You get your first job, formal job. And you learn things. You start to learn things. You make mistakes. But you are learning until finally you become a responsible adult. And what that what what is it they what is what that means is that finally we are able to take care of ourselves, right? That is the meaning of a responsible adult. You take care of your bills, you pay for your expenses, and you are careful because you start to see the future <laughs> and you know what is going to happen in the future. In the future you are not going to continue having the strength, energy enthusiasm, abilities to make money, or whatever like you had in the, in the younger age. So what is what do you do in your golden years? You start thinking of your legacy. What is what I'm going to live? When I, when I departure and I go heaven, when I go to see my father, the Lord God, what are the things that my family will remember about me? What is going to be my legacy? How do I want them to remember me? Are they going to go to my grave? You need to think about those things. Funeral. You know, some, several people have said to me, throughout the years, I want you to officiate my funeral, Gian. And I said, sure. And there are ones that even have said to me, this is the order of the service, of my funeral service. They give me the list of songs, just like that, because people are preparing for that, fine, that, that part. Do you remember that I told you the seasons, like summer, winter, and et cetera, they are a cycle. They come back. Life is not like that. It's not like that. We are not going to come back to that. We are not. Now, what is what we need to learn in order to, to keep the energy is that in each season, we need to learn to enjoy the season. And what is what will help you to, to keep the energy is when in each season, you get the job done. That will help you incredibly. Get the job done. Procrastinators always, always suffer. Because it's just a pain you know where when you have that pile of stuff there just waiting for you to take care of and you don't do it and you just say, ah, I'm going to neglect this one more day. Let's see tomorrow. But if you understand that wherever you are in life, there are some things that you need to get it done. Get it done and enjoy it. Enjoy it, my friend. It doesn't matter how old are you. You are a teenager or you are a young adult. You are an adult or you are a senior citizen. Enjoy it by, what? by doing something, by getting it done. 
get it done. That's why you need to think about what are the things that you need to do and take it, take care of it, get it done. It is so interesting to see how many people, their, their level of energy increases as they get the job done. So many of you probably are like me, that you have a checklist, and whenever the thing is done, check. Check. And you know what? It is a beautiful feeling. Done. 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 Oh, boy, that is great. And you need to learn to enjoy it. What is what you have to do? Do it. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. And then what? You need to get ready for the next. You have to learn to celebrate the victory of whatever you accomplished. You have to celebrate that. But important is that you take your time to reflect about the next. It, it is not a matter of just running, you know, one thing after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. You are not reflecting on what you are doing. You, you have to stop and say, well, what I am doing here? What kind of things have I done the last month? Okay, today is the 17th of May. We are halfway through the month of May. Two days in the next second part of the month. So, review your goals. Have you accomplished those goals? At least 50% of that because it's middle of the month. Have you? No, you know what? I told my daughter, I told my husband, I told my wife, I told, I told my mother, I told my pastor, I told my friend that, I, you know, at the end of the month, that thing will be fixed. Okay? And how is it going? Well, I haven't started yet. But I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. And you know what? You will not enjoy the days. You will just thinking, oh, gosh, I have that thing there waiting and waiting. My friend, get it done. Th take your time to reflect about what you are accomplishing in order to move forward. So that is the reason why it's important to keep the energy. But now I want to talk to you about things that takes, take our energy away. Have you noticed that sometimes you are so positive? Some days you are excited, happy, you know, 100% charge, and you are just ready to go, ready to roll in your day. You got your drink, whatever what you drink, or your vitamins, or your pills, or your shoes, or whatever. You are ready to go, but suddenly some things happen around you, and that will just drain your energy away. What is the number one thing that does that? Arguments. Arguments. Sometimes the argument is for something so silly, but it's, it's, it's the fact that there is an argument about it. To be around with negative people, around negative people, it is so overwhelming that will take all your energy away. You are away. Get into the shower. You're ready to fix your coffee or whatever you drink in the morning. You go to the kitchen, you are about to drink that or prepare your cereal with milk and bananas or strawberries, whatever you like to eat for breakfast. And you are there and suddenly this negative person comes and voila. The criticism starts. Here you are again making a mess with the milk. Do you see all the milk in the counter? You did it again. It's just the beginning of the day. Give me a break. And you know what is going to do that in you? Will take the energy away. You were happy, but as soon as the criticism is started and they're complaining. They're complaining about whatever you are doing or you didn't do. Yesterday you didn't clean up the kitchen. You make that mess and then you left and I have to clean that. The complaining, watch my friends, those things are taking your energy away. 
Now, it's up to you what you're going to do about it. If you already know that you are around or possibly you will be around a negative person that loves the criticism and the complaining, let me ask you this question. Why in the world would you like to be around? <laughs> would you? Would you? You already know it's a negative person. Arguments for everything. Criticism. Complaining. You better take off. You better don't go there. Don't do that. I hope you're understanding, my friend. Don't do that. Takes your energy away. Don't do it. You are in your home, relax, ding dong. Who is coming? You open the door and then you see this negative person and you're just like, uh, hello? I mean, you don't need more than 10 seconds. You are already drained out. You're like, oh gosh. You wonder, what's, the, what's wrong with some people that you just see them and it's like it's a magnet. Magnet that squeeze your energy. Just, and you're like, oh, gosh. Sometimes it's a customer. The constant complaining, the constant criticism. Sometimes it's a co-worker. All the time. So watch this because it's up to you how will you handle your energy. Your energy is your responsibility. Please pay attention to what I just said. Your level of energy, it is your responsibility. It's not other people's responsibility. It's your responsibility. So if you already know that there is one, two, any number of people that are negative, that they love to argue, that they love to bring you criticism for whatever you are using or wearing or your hair, your, you, you walk too loud. What? Yeah, when you are walking, why you don't walk like normal people? No. And? What's the problem? You know, some people just love to argue. And, and you know what? If you know that there is an individual like that, we'll criticize you. You walk too loud. You're, you're breathing. Your breathing is too loud. My breathing is too loud. Yeah, you, 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 you breathe too loud. <sighs> Annoys me. Well, well, let me ask you, why are you doing around this person? Why? Those are the most important things that you need to take special attention, my friend. Because when you are with energy and you are around someone like that and drains you down, Guess what is going to happen afterwards? You will be all weak. You will be like a punching bag, all beat up. And you just don't know what to think. You just think, what in the world just happened here? I just got up. I just came in. What is happening? Well, it's up to you because it's your responsibility to take care of your level of energy. If you are allowing somebody else to, to use that energy and just drain you down, that's your problem. I will say this with all respect, but if somebody is negative and is just taking all your energy and you are allowing, you don't show me much intelligence. It's the opposite. Forgive me, okay? I'm pretty straightforward here. But if you already know someone is negative with arguments, criticism, and constant complaining, you are not being smart about it. It's the opposite. Now, the next thing that will drain you out is when you are with someone that doesn't talk to you in a long period of time. We all love silence once in a while when we are with somebody. Why? Because we all play with our phones. You are with somebody drinking a cup of coffee, having lunch or watching a show, whatever, or whatever. 
Sometimes you need a little break. Sometimes you need two minutes because you are responding a text message. We all know that. But you meet with somebody or you are in a trip with somebody. Ten minutes silence, half hour silence, one hour silence. Nice trip, huh? You are watching something on TV. Somebody is not talking to you. You start to feel like, what's, what's going on here? A little much. What is going to do that in you? It will start to take you down, your energy, because you are to start to feel uncomfortable. Long periods of silence. Different situation is if you are by yourself. That's different. And even then, you need to take your time to make a call, send a text message to, to somebody because we are created to be in community. Now, the next thing that will take your energy away is negative conversations or negative thinking. Negative conversations is easy to comprehend. You are with somebody, you know, it's not a negative person. It's a smart, bright guy. You know, you like this guy, he's smart. But then he starts to give you all the details and specifics about this particular deal. And you are just like, okay, I'm, I'm following the idea. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, if the earth rotates in 24.3 hours a day, and then the wind will change 25 miles per hour. Okay, I'm following. Yeah, but if this continues happening, suddenly the temperature is going to be increased in three degrees in the following 27 years, which means that, and you're like, oh my gosh. Smart people also can just take your energy away when they are just telling you negative stuff. I don't care how smart anyone it is, as soon as I detect, and I repeat, as soon as I detect negative conversations, do you know what I do? Bye-bye, baby. I am out of here. I don't tolerate negative talk. I just can't take negative talk. Why? Because it takes my energy away. So why would you accept something like that then? It doesn't matter. Maybe the person is not negative, but right now is in the mood of talking about something negative. Stop this person or go away. But sometimes the negativism is not coming from outside. Sometimes the negativism is inside. It is us. We are the ones thinking, I hate that they did this to me. I hate this. I really, I am mad at this person. I can't stand that. It's not right. They shouldn't do this. <laughs> you calm down for 10 seconds, go back to the kitchen, grab something to drink, and you come back to the same thought. But I wonder why he said that. Was he, was he saying that to me or? I don't know. Etc. Negative thinking will also take your energy away. So it is nobody else outside of the, your inner circle. It's you, yourself, thinking negative stuff. Stop it. will take your energy away. Next thing, facing the same problem over and over again. You already discussed with this person. Listen, you come late to the house. We understand that, but I'm the first one leaving in the morning. Do not park your car in the driveway because in the morning, you are not going to be up at the time that I leave, and it's an inconvenience for me. I'm losing five minutes there just to grab your keys. You don't leave your keys in the same place. I already told you, please don't do that. After all, this is my home. Do you understand? So please, guess what happened the next day. <laughs> you get up, you are so full of energy, you get your car, you have your bags, 27 bags because you're a busy person, you are carrying everything, and then the car of this person is again in the driveway. You cannot leave without moving that car. And you are just thinking, did I speak in German to this guy? 
was that conversation real? And you wonder, did we talk about this yesterday or not? Let me check. Grab her of your phone. I texted. She said, okay. When someone is giving you the same problem again and again and again and again, it's going to take your energy away. It's up to you what you're going to do. You know, if I have someone that I spoke several times about, don't park the car in my driveway because I leave, you know what I will do one day? <laughs> Honestly, I will take the keys. I'm not the one person making drama scenes anywhere. I don't like that. But somehow, I admit it, I probably am vindictive. There is a limit for everything. And I will say, ah, 25 times we talk about it, you promised me this, and you still do it. Okay. I grab the keys, move the car, park somewhere, take my car, I leave, but I bring the keys of this car with me. So 20 minutes later, I receive a phone call or a text message. By any chance, do you have my keys? Yes, I do. Why is that? Why? If someone is giving you trouble and it's either really a person that doesn't have understanding of life or B, intentionally is upsetting you, you better have to do something about it. Otherwise, it's going to destroy your life. It's up to you. I don't mind having an argument with someone intentionally because I already told him or told her 27 times, don't park there. And this person persists in the same stubborn action. I'll do something about it. Now, what about you? Ah, it's okay. I can take the keys again. <laughs> so now you are 82 years old. Can I have your keys, please? Yeah. <laughs> do you understand? If you don't make the changes in other people's behavior, that will be the rest of your life. Bad shows and bad news will take your energy away. You keep watching those shows, these videos on YouTube or whatever, and it's just bad stuff, bad news, negative stuff is going to take your energy away. And, of course, the last thing that will take your energy away is when you work too much without resting properly. You work and you don't sleep your eight hours, you are going to be exhausted and you are going to be without energy. You have to sleep eight hours. And, of course, you have to eat, get protein, drink enough fluids. Okay, that is what takes your energy away. What are the things that energizes us? Now, this is a list of answers of many people that I contacted, and this is what they say. The first one, they say, what energizes me is when I am with someone with high level of energy. If I see somebody that is energetic, you know what? It's like, hmm, I'm recharged with this person. Man, I like this guy. Man, this woman, she is an energizing bunny. I like that. Man, what else? Let's do this. Done. Now what? This thing. Done. Man, now what? This is Boom. You know, it's so exciting to me when I have the company of somebody that is energetic. You know what else? When there is an emergency. You are maybe calm, relaxed, and suddenly you hear the sirens. Ambulance. What's happening? What's happening? And then you, you look and there is an, an emergency situation. That will give you energy. Adrenaline. Man, you will be like, man, we got to save this kid. You are flush. You will be there in the flushes of a flush. Yeah. Energizes you. You know what? You get energized when you are excited about a project. If you have something to do and you are thinking about that project, fixing that car of yours, redecorating your home, your room, redoing your kitchen, changing the floors in the living room, accomplishing that project that you have in the workplace, you have a project, you will have energy. You just want to do it. You are like, man, I got to do this. I got to do this. The next thing that will energize you is when you are about to meet someone new to you. You know, somebody says, hey, imagine in the romantic scenery, hey, Bill, here is Jennifer, and she likes you. She would like to meet you. Really? Okay, imagine Bill. He's really, I'm ready to go. 
I want to meet her, you know. Or simply you're going to meet somebody, somebody that you like. You know, what a wonderful thing is to meet family. I love that, you know, to see your children, your brothers, your sisters, your nieces and nephews, your mom, your grandma, your grandkids. That energizes you. You just see them and boom, it's like suddenly, it's like you were plugged. Boom. Man, that's great. Just the company of the people that you like energizes you. What else? When somebody says to you, if you do this, you will receive this. Oh, the potential reward, it is exciting. It is exciting. Children in the house, they hear that the parents say, if you paint the whole house, we will give you this. We will go here. We will do this and that. Man, I want to do this. Energy arise. When I am about to do something that I, I do enjoy very much, what is what you like to do? I like to watch TV. Well, I understand that, but I, that's not to do. Well, I do that. I understand, but I'm talking about actions, friend, things that you like to do with your hands, that you move, with your mind, you write, you build. What is what you like to do? You like to travel? The next thing, when I am about to go to a place that I love to be, that will energize you immediately. Do you see how many options are for you to be energized? It's up to you. There are many things. And of course, great news. Great news. You're going to receive the check in the mail. It's coming to you. The refund is about to come. Your package is on its way. Whatever the good news is. And food. Food will energize you, not just with the motivation. Friends, it's real. Believe it or not, as a human being, there is something special that happens in your body. Every time you have food, you get energy. Guess what? If you don't eat what is right, if you don't have protein in your system, it doesn't matter how many orders of French fries you eat, you're not going to get any energy. If you don't get protein, I don't care if you are drinking those energy drinks or you are drinking 20 cups of coffee. If you are not eating, if you are not chewing right, mm -mm, you need to eat right. Feed yourself. That will help you to get energy. I don't understand why I'm so exhausted all the time. Are you sleeping well? No, that's the problem. But why you are you not sleeping well? You need to think about it. What are the reasons why you are not sleeping well? You got to sleep well. Go to the doctor. Talk to people that know about those things. You know, are doctors for these kind of things. And of course, good health will give you energy. Some people are without energy because they don't have good health. Well, they need to try to find solutions for their health issues. What else would energize you? When you have peace in your home. In your house, there is peace, you will be energized. The excitement of whatever great thing God sends you today. One of my friends said that to me. He says, you know what? I wake up and suddenly I think, what great thing the Lord God will send me today. Just the excitement of receiving something good for God. You know what? That will energize you. That will make your day positive. you got to believe that God will bless you with something. Other friend of mine from Oklahoma said to me, you know what energizes me? A sunny day. A cool sunny day. That gives me energy. But naturally, my friends, the most important thing that we can feel is love. And that will energize you. Feeling love. I want to close today with the last section of this message is supernatural energy. How can you receive supernatural energy? Listen to this statement from the prophet Micah, chapter 3, verse 8, section 8. He says, 
the Lord's Spirit has filled me with power, goodness, and strength. Another human being like you and I saying, the Lord has filled me with power, goodness, and strength. And this is for real. This is not Avatar or Iron Man stories. No, this is for real. The Lord's Spirit can give you the power, goodness, and strength to accomplish things. He says, Micah chapter 4, verse 13. People of Jerusalem, get up and crush them. I will make you very strong. This is the promise from God. The good Lord is telling to the people of Israel, come on, go. Defeat the enemy. I'm with you. I will make you very strong. But when those things happen, friends, when you are doing God's will, the prophet Haggai, chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Think about what is happening. You have planted many seeds, but you have gathered only a few crops. You have food to eat, but not enough to get full. You have some clothes to wear, but not enough to keep you warm. You earn a little money, but you don't know where it all goes. It is as though there is a hole in your pocket. This prophet is talking to people that experience low level of energy. Failure. Lack of success. How come a prophet can talk to us in this way? Well, because we are not doing what is right. Listen to the verse 1. I'm sorry, the verse 9. He says, you people look for a big harvest, but when, when you go to gather the crop, there is only a little grain. So you bring that grain home, and then I send a wind that blows it all away. Why is this happening? Because my house, this is what the Lord says, because my house is still in ruins while each of you runs home to take care of your own house. Many people are, are living disastrous lives because they don't care for the kingdom of God. Is that your case, my friend? I'm not accusing anyone. I'm not condemning anyone. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I just want you to to be honest with yourself and ask this honest question to yourself. Is this your case? Because if this is your case, you need to make some changes here. Listen to the next prophet, Zephaniah 3.20. He says, prophesying, the Lord God talking to us. He says, I will lead you back home. I will bring your people back together. I will cause people everywhere to honor and praise you. You will see me bring back all the, all the blessings you once had. All the blessings that you once had. The Lord can bless us once again when we do what is right. And again, Haggai chapter 2 verse 19, he says... Your seed for planting is still in the barn. And look at the vines. The fig trees and the pomegranate and olive trees. They have not yet produced any fruit. But beginning today, I will bless you. That is what the Lord wants to do with all of us. He wants to bless us. He wants us to have the energy, the enthusiasm, the optimism to go after the projects that he is giving us. We need to make certain decisions with our own selves. Now, next Sunday, on May 24th, in the worship service 191, I'm going to speak to you about something very important. is how to see people's thoughts. What? Yeah. You can see people's thoughts. And that will help you to continue developing this very energetic lifestyle. That is the message for next Sunday. Don't miss it. But of today, I want to conclude with this scripture one more time. Micah 3, 8, A. The Lord's Spirit has filled me with power, 
goodness and strength. For brothers and sisters, what a scripture. What a scripture that you should get this slide printed, frame it, point, put that thing in front of you in your car, in your mirror, in your bathroom, in your closet, in your kitchen, in your car, wherever you are working in your shop, where you work out, in the backyard, wherever you are, the Lord's Spirit has filled me with power, goodness, and strength. He wants to give you that. The question is, have you given to the Lord your heart? Because if you haven't, there is no way that He will fill your heart with His Spirit if there is no Spirit of God in your heart. Open your heart today. Join us in a prayer. It's in the screen. It's on the screen. Dear God, you are right and I am wrong. I have failed to you, to myself, and to many others. I have been so selfish. I don't want to be like that. Could you please change me? I surrender to you, O oh Lord. Please forgive me for all my sins. I open my heart to you, Lord. I want to obey you and trust you and serve you forever, my Lord. Starting today, I want to see life exactly as you do. With that in mind, remember that it's on the cross where you receive the forgiveness of your sins. Thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. Say with me, I am forgiven and saved by faith in Jesus. Therefore, I can also declare my life is going to be great and blessed this year, 2020. Amen. You have a beautiful week. You are blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See you Tuesday. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight Anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served I know, I know, I know, I know Victory Church. We hope you enjoyed the video.